This video is about rates of change. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.2. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. For each scenario below, determine whether the two variables have a positive rate of change or a negative rate of change. A positive rate of change between two quantities means they increase together and decrease together. In other words, as one increases, the other increases. As one decreases, the other decreases. That's a positive rate of change. A negative rate of change means that as one quantity increases, the other decreases. Number one, the amount of money in a vending machine versus the number of items remaining inside the vending machine. These quantities will have a negative rate of change because as the money inside the vending machine increases, the number of items decreases. Number two, the number of days since flu season began versus the number of people that have caught the flu. These two quantities will have a positive rate of change because as the number of days into flu season increases, the number of people that have caught the flu also increases. Number three, the number of years since 2000 versus the number of Teslas on the road. These two quantities will have a positive rate of change. Every year there are more Teslas on the road. So as the number of years since 2000 increases, the number of Teslas on the road also increases. Number four, the number of miles driven since last filling up a gas tank versus the amount of gas left inside the tank. These quantities will have a negative rate of change. As the number of miles driven increases, the amount of gas left in the tank decreases. Number five is calculator active. So let's go ahead and type g of x into the calculator as y1. Hit the y equals button and type in the equation just like this. Part A, use your graphing calculator to find the values of g for the x values indicated in the table. The easiest way to find many values of a function is to use the table feature on a calculator. But in order to do that, first I need you to adjust one setting on your calculator. Hit second window to get to the table setup menu. Go down to where it says independent auto and switch it over to ask and hit enter. Now hit second graph to access the table menu. Any value that we type in for x will give us the corresponding y value. So let's look back at the table. We want to find the value of the function at 0.5. So we can type in 0.5 and there's the value. Next we want the value at 0.8. So we type in 0.8. There it is. 0.9 0.99. There's 0.9 and here's 0 0.99. 1.01, 1.1. 1.2 .1. and 1.5. I'm going to copy all of these values onto the worksheet. Part B, use your graphing calculator to find the average rates of change of G over the following intervals. Be sure to show your setup for your computations. The average rate of change of G of X on the interval from A to B is given by G at B minus G at A over B minus A. So the average rate of change of G on the interval from 0.5 to 1.5 will be given by this expression. We can type this expression into the calculator almost exactly like it is. Since we typed the equation for G in as Y1, 
then on the calculator we will use y1 instead of g. So first we need to set up a proper fraction. My software is a little bit old, so I have to hit alpha y equals enter. That will work for you too, but for your calculator it might work to just hit alpha x. So try that and see if you get a fraction. So instead of writing g at, what was it? Instead of writing g at 1.5, we're going to do y1 at 1.5. We can get the y1 to show up by hitting alpha trace enter. And we can make it y1 at 1.5 using parentheses. Minus. We need y1 again, so alpha trace enter parentheses, and this time it's 0.5 over 1.5 minus 0.5. So the average rate of change on this interval is 0 0.9. The average rate of change on this interval will be given by this expression. Let's type it in. So we need y1 at 1.2, so alpha trace enter at 1.2 minus y1 at 0.8, so alpha trace enter at 0.8 over 1.2 minus 0.8. The average rate of change is 0 0.48. The average rate of change on this interval will be given by this expression. Let's type it in. Type it in like this. So the average rate of change is 0 0.42. The average rate of change on this interval will be given by this expression. Let's type it in. Set up your fraction. Now we need y at 1.01, so alpha trace enter at 1.01 minus y1 at 0.99, so alpha trace enter at 0.99 divided by 1.01 minus 0.99. And the average rate of change is 0 0.4002. Part C. Based on the average rates of change from part B, what do you think is the rate of change of G when X equals 1? Give a reason for your answer. Well, notice that the intervals that we were using are surrounding the value of X equals 1. But as we sort of go from left to right, the intervals are getting smaller and smaller, closer and closer to the actual value of x equals 1. 0.99 is just a tiny bit below x equals 1, and 1.01 is just a tiny bit above. Therefore, these average rates of change should be getting closer and closer to the actual rate of change when x is equal to 1. So we went from 0.9 point to point four eight to point four two to point four zero zero two. This last one should be pretty close to the actual rate of change at x equals one. In fact, the instantaneous rate of change of g of x at x equals one is probably zero point four because the average rates of change on smaller and smaller intervals containing x equals one are approaching 0 0.4. Number six, the graph of H is shown above along with four points A, B, C, and D. Sketch a line tangent to the graph of H at the four points indicated on the graph. Here's a tangent line drawn at each point. Part B, 
Order the rates of change of the graph of h from least to greatest at the points a, b, c, and d. The instantaneous rate of change at a point is the slope of the tangent line through that point. Notice that the slope of the tangent line at a is negative. The slope of the tangent at b is positive. The slope of the tangent at c is zero and the slope of the tangent at d is negative. There's only one positive slope, so that means the rate of change at point b is the greatest. The next greatest rate of change will be at point c with a slope of zero, so c is next as I go from greatest to least. That leaves the two negative slopes, A and D. At the moment, I don't actually know which of these is greater. They're both negative. Both of these are less than C and B. The slopes at A and D are very close, so I'm going to move them side by side so I can see which one is steeper, which one is more negative. So remember, the green one is the slope at point A. Let's move it over here next to the slope at point D. So side by side, I think you can see that the slope at D is a little bit steeper than the slope at A. So that means the slope at D is more negative and therefore smaller than the slope at A. So therefore, the rate of change from least to greatest should start with D, the most negative, and then go to A, and then C and B, zero and positive. Number seven, for each of the following statements about the graph of H shown above, circle the correct answer and the corresponding reasoning. Part A. From point A to point B, the rate of change of H is increasing or decreasing. I want you to memorize that an increasing rate of change means the function is concave up, and a decreasing rate of change means the function is concave down. So, from A to B, is H concave up or concave down? From A to B, H is concave up. Therefore, the rate of change is increasing. And that's the rest of this answer, because the graph of H is concave up. Part B. From point B to point C, the graph of H is increasing or decreasing. This should be easy to see. From B to C, H is increasing. We see that it is rising from left to right, so it's definitely increasing. But let's read on for the actual justification. Because the rate of change of H is positive or increasing. Here are the main things I need you to memorize about the relationship between the original function and the rate of change. When the original function is concave up, that means there's an increasing rate of change. Concave down means a decreasing rate of change. When the original function is increasing, that means a positive rate of change. And when the original function is decreasing, that means a negative rate of change. So right now, we are saying the, that the original function h is increasing. That would be because the rate of change is positive. So I'm going to circle that one. This is actually the core of a bigger chart that I want you to memorize. So pause the screen and study this. I want you to write this chart from memory on a piece of scratch paper or in the margin 
at the beginning of your next test or quiz. Part C. From point C to point D. Is the rate of change of H increasing or decreasing? Well, the rate of change being increasing or decreasing will depend on whether f of x is concave up or concave down. Uh, I'm noticing that concave up is not one of the options, so I'm betting we're going to look and notice that h is concave down from c to d. Let's take a look. And yes, from c to d, h is concave down. And because h is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.